All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Weathering. Um, so this is part two in our Weathering series. And uh, yesterday we, or in our last video, we took a look at, um, we looked at the fact that there are two major types of weathering and said that there's mechanical and chemical. Uh, then we went on to start to list some different types of mechanical weathering, dove right in there. And so we're going to kind of pick up with that today. I mentioned in our last video that we would eventually be taking a look at the old man in the mountain from New Franconia Notch, New Hampshire. And we will still plan to do that. I am going to kind of leave that out of uh, today's lesson, but I will mention the fact that uh, it is a result, uh, the falling of the man of the mountain is a result of ice wedging or um, frost wedging. Um, those are essentially the same term for the same thing or different terms for the same thing. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on from there. We'll come back to the old man of the mountain another time. But uh, in moving on, we're going to continue with another type of mechanical weathering. And this next one is called thermal expansion. So we just talked about ice wedging or frost wedging, which of course means that really cold water to the point of freezing got into the cracks of rocks. Um, but it's, all, it's not just cold that can cause rocks to become weathered. Uh, heat can also do the same thing, or continued heating and then cooling of rocks, um, not necessarily involving water, uh, can um, result in the breaking of rocks, which again is what weathering is. So the repeated heating and then cooling of rocks, this causes stress uh, because remember when something heats up the atoms are moving faster, when something cools down the thermal energy is being removed and so those atoms are slowing down and getting closer together and that constant uh, pulling apart and pushing together of atoms um, in the makeup of the rock can eventually uh, cause breaking in the rock. All right, here's another little quiz for you. Which one, which of these pictures represents exfoliation? Which one of these represents thermal expansion? All right, take a careful look. Exfoliation or thermal expansion? Ah, yeah, sorry, trick question. Uh, actually, they are both thermal expansion and thermal expansion is actually what often leads to sheeting or the exfoliation that we talked about uh, yesterday. So sorry about that little trick question there. All right, our next form of mechanical uh, weathering is root wedging. Root wedging. So instead of ice or frost wedging, we've now got root wedging. And this is when instead of water getting into, into the cracks, it's actually plant roots that get into a crack. They grow and as they grow, they push the rock apart and cause cracks and cause it to actually break into pieces. Part of the reason that the root is able to actually break uh, the rock is because the roots not only will kind of get into the crack, but the roots will also um, absorb minerals from the rock. It uh, absorbs minerals that the plant needs. So usually these are trees and bushes, not like a daisy or something like that. But uh, but the, uh, the plant needs nutrients. It needs minerals. Usually it would get that from the soil, but it can actually get some from rocks as well. And so as it takes the minerals from the rock, that weakens the rock and makes it so it's not as strong and makes it easier for the root as it grows to actually break the rock apart. So uh, here is yet another excellent animation of some root wedging for you. See the cracks in the rock? Now the cracks have roots. Go figure. Uh, here's an example of a tree growing off the side of a cliff, a rocky cliff more than likely, and so uh, root wedging would be going on there as well. It's holding the, the tree in place. <laughs> I kind of like this one, uh, this meme here. This is how paper beats rock. Paper, of course. You know, trees. We use trees to make paper. Yeah, okay. Hopefully you got that. 
All right, and here's just another little picture. Um, you have some layered rock here with, uh, here are the layers in the rock, but here you have a tree growing. Uh, so there are roots going in between these layers of rock, actually pushing those layers up. Whoops. Uh, here's another thing. This has always like boggled my mind. So oftentimes in little towns and cities where there's a nice brick sidewalk, you will see that they plant trees. Trees. It looks really pretty when they first do it. Um, I often wonder what they're thinking because don't they realize that trees will grow? And as trees grow, their roots get larger and more spread out. And as those roots grow, they start to push up the sidewalk. Um, and so you have to see the breaking up of, of not just natural rocks, but also bricks and things of that sort as well. All right, here's one for you. Which picture best represents ice wedging? And which picture best represents root wedging? Hopefully this isn't too challenging. Yes, letter A, of course, is root wedging. And letter B would be ice or frost wedging. All right, here we go. Which one is root wedging and which one is just a wedgie? Yes, that's right. B is the root wedg wedging. And of course, we have sumo wrestlers over here in A. They would be the wedgie. All right, now then, ladies and gentlemen, moving on. All right, so another uh, another activity or uh, type of mechanical weathering is animal activity that can cause mechanical weathering. So animals can actually wear away the rock uh, as they dig through. There are a lot of burrowing animals of various kinds. Um, for instance, you have uh, worms, you have moles, you have owls, well, certain types of owls anyways. Um, you have your groundhogs, hedgehogs, you have, they, I don't know if these, I don't think these are prairie dogs, maybe they are. Um, but anyways, uh, a lot of burrowing animals. And then you have human activity. Um, animals break up rocks by burrowing. Humans break up rocks by all kinds of means. Um, we tend to do it a lot faster than most natural ways of weathering rock. But, you know, the pyramids of Egypt uh, did not, the stone that makes them up did not get that way naturally, that's for sure. Uh, they did not get to that shape naturally. Um, they were, the, the rocks were broken into the right size pieces and put into place. Uh, Stonehenge in England, uh, also a result of human weathering, human activity. Here we have a mine of sorts. Um, here we have, uh, it's probably a gravestone, um, but uh, some sort of or a memorial or monument, uh, some sort of stone that has been carved in. And then you have this is an re also a result of some sort of some sort of uh, mining or something as well. This is also all right. Our last form of mechanical weathering, ladies and gentlemen, is wind weathering wind weathering. So um, with wind weathering, and we talked about this briefly in our last video, particles of sand or pebbles or dust get carried by the wind and this causes abrasion, also known as friction, which slowly breaks down the rock. So here's a pretty dramatic example of some wind weathering uh, where uh, the sand and pebbles from the dry ground all around it uh, has been picked up by the wind and it kind of blasts what used to be a much larger rock and uh, has shaped that rock in a rather dramatic fashion. Here's another example. This one kind of reminds me a little bit maybe of Cleopatra or something, the way that it has worn out. Um, but right in this area here you can see where uh, you know the the wind isn't able to pick most of the sand and particles up very high and so it is this part here that ends up getting worn down more so than this part up here 
uh, as the wind blows it tends to blow it in this direction and isn't always going to blow it up as high so I'm sure the wind has caused some weathering up in this direction but mostly it's down here all right ladies and gentlemen you have a great day we'll talk about chemical weathering in our next episode thank you